Okay, I did not get to okay. this area. Yeah. And I'm going to be talking about like the physiology of like how the, yeah. the circuit works. Um, she, she, she's going to audio record me while I'm talking about it, but there won't be any data. This, this is just it's for just her learning purposes. Yeah. Yeah. If you're as long as you're okay with yeah, that. Okay. Fine. There you go. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, so this particular type of ECMO support, this is VA ECMO, so oh, veno arterial ECMO. Um, so in this <laughs> form of support, we essentially have a large um, venous cannula placed in the right internal jugular vein, uh, which the tip of the cannula situates in the SVC right atrial junction. So that volume of blood, the venous return from the patient, some a portion of that is being drained. Uh, into the venous line here uh, up until it reaches this this pump head so this is a centrifugal pump which works off of a magnet so this particular uh, center mag pump head blood uh, inside of this pump head there's a small impeller uh, and so uh, the impeller as the impeller spins it creates a vortex that allows us to siphon or drain so the this patients. is a driving forcefully blood to come out of the blood yeah. yeah. Well, so there's no gas exchange taking place here. This is purely just drainage. So, yeah. so, so this is just removing the patient's venous return into the pump head. Once it gets into the pump head, it then so everything on the venous limb, everything on the venous side is under negative pressure because as you're pulling fluid out, it naturally just generates negative drainage pressure. Yeah. Once it reaches the pump head, it then gets displaced forward into your, so this is our orange line, this is our post-pump pre-membrane line. So everything past the pump head this way is under positive pressure. Yeah. So you have negative Makes pressure sense. on the venous limb, positive pressure post-pump. Yeah. So the patient's venous return is then displaced into this post-pump pre-membrane line before it finally reaches the inlet of our oxygenator. So this oxygenator, this, this is... This part is the oxygenator. Pardon? This one? Yep, yeah, yeah, this one here. So this is called the Nautilus. Uh, this is a um, cir circular flow design membrane. And so as the patient's venous return gets pushed across the pump and gets displaced into the membrane, it, it enters into the membrane um, where it meets our, 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 our gas. Yeah. So there's... Um, the source of oxygenation. Correct. Oxygenation. Yep. So, so, so this gas line, this is called sweep gas. Sweep gas is a combination of gas flow and oxygen concentration. So, so as blood is flowing in transversely this way, the gas flow actually runs counter current to that. Yeah. So inside of this membrane, there are little tiny hollow fiber filaments. They're polymethyl pentene hollow fiber filaments. They're really small long filaments just like the crrt filaments v very similar yes yeah. very very similar except rather than clearing um you know solutes or yeah. you know debris um the the nature of how these fibers work is it's purely just for gas exchange so there's an inherent pressure gradient in the blood phase where as it reaches so blood transfers through the membrane and it actually touches the fibers but the gas phase and the blood phase are totally separate of each other so the gas and the blood they do not mix so there is a distinct separation where gas flows inside of the fibers and blood flows on the outside of the fibers now all along those little fibers there are little tiny you'd have to look at it under a microscope but there are little tiny pores that are situated all along the fibers Little blood proteins basically help to, um, uh, they sort of fill those small pores. Mm -hmm. But so as gas flows in counter current to the blood phase, mm -hmm. there's a natural process of diffusion where CO2 gets cleared as gas flows along the fibers. So CO2 gets taken so off from the blood. I can just uh, imagine that it uh, looks like the advocatory membrane and the mechanism of gas exchange there. Say that again? So it looks like the advocatory membrane and the mechanism of gas exchange? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a, a, the, the passive diffusion of gas, so you have CO2 that gets, dis, that gets drawn out of blood, and then oxygen gets instilled in. Yeah. And so that process takes place all along while the blood is transferring from the inlet of the membrane on the venous side 
until it eventually leaves the membrane on the outlet side. And as you can see, the color of blood entering the membrane is a lot darker than the color of blood leaving the membrane. So all of the blood that leaves the membrane on the outlet, you can see it's bright red. So the gas exchange process has already taken place once the blood gets displaced out of the outlet of the membrane. So this is all highly saturated blood that then gets returned to a separate cannula that's positioned in the um, arterial circulation or to the systemic circulation of the patient. Uh, so the, the return cannula, situated also in the neck, is placed surgically by the surgeons into the carotid artery. And so the, so the tip of the cannula terminates uh, closest to the, 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 the aorta. And so all of this blood, his hemodynamics are, he has good hemodynamics. So his, 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 his he has good AV synchrony. So as even though his heart is beating, um, all, this blood that we are providing or displacing back into, into him, into the patient, um, reaches the aorta and then eventually travels to his end organs and pr provides oxygenation and perfusion. Um, so this patient's particular disease type, even though he does not need cardiopulmonary, uh, I guess I should say cardiac support, um, we have found that using VA ECMO rather than the VV ECMO. So that's so the other mode of ECMO support is venovenous or VV ECMO. Uh, VV ECMO is primarily used for respiratory support in patients that have acute ARDS, respiratory failure, possibly PPHN or pulmonary hypertension. Um, but the downsides of uh, VV ECMO in this particular uh, situation uh, is that um, so if you have you know, lungs that are relatively sick and a heart that is still functioning, you know, appropriately, uh, despite the volume that you're draining into the circuit and oxygenating, the patient is still going to be ejecting some venous return to his native lungs, where if there's poor gas exchange or if there's any capacity for the patient to have a sudden abrupt loss of hemodynamics or, you know, a loss of native cardiac support, we opted to provide this patient with VA ECMO as opposed to VV. So, be, so his his disease process, there is some risk in him becoming hemodynamically unstable, uh, which un unfortunately VV ECMO does not provide any hemodynamic support. It's purely respiratory support for gas exchange purposes only. So, in light of his relatively sick lungs and also understanding that there could be a moment in time where he his hemodynamics change and he does need cardiac support placing him on placing him on to VA ECMO can provide the best of both worlds where he's not only getting provided respiratory support but there is some hemodynamic support that this circuit is also providing. So this is the same unit for both moods? Pardon me? This, this unit is the same for both modes? Yes, yeah, you can so use, the, the same circuit is used for either mode. The only difference is that even, so when you, you, you are, you are re draining and returning blood into the, into the venous circulatory system. Whereas in on VA, you're draining it from the venous circulatory system and you're returning it in, back into the systemic circulatory system. So you're just, it, it's, it's all about where, you, where you're draining and returning the blood into. Um, but yeah, you can use the same membrane, the same pump head, the same tubing. You can use, this whole setup can be used for both VA and VV ECMO purposes, absolutely. So how to select this mode here? Well, so this, so th there, there's no mode, so selecting modes is done when the patient is cannulated. Uh, yeah. and, and, and that is all determined based upon the type of cannulas and where the cannulas are positioned in the patient. So the only thing that this module provides is, so this module, this is, this is called the SMART module. Um, this provides real-time clinical data with regards to saturation of venous blood entering the, the, the inlet of the membrane, the saturation of blood leaving the outlet of the membrane, which is right here. And then we, we also uh, can, can, this SMART module provides pressure readings. The pressure readings, um, so the one thing about these membranes, yeah, sure, that's okay. Well, I need a section because he's like...
Okay. But yeah, 